Disclaimer. My work draws heavily upon the works of Carlos Castaneda. While there are few direct quotes, the underlying concepts are drawn from his work. My interpretations of those works are provided to advance my own point of view and in no way constitute a claim to anything that was not created by me. I have no commercial interest in this work. It is provided free for those who might find value in it. I have no connection with Castaneda's estate, nor with any entity, commercial or otherwise, that claims to be connected with Castaneda or with anyone connected to him. I express no opinion on the claims of those who purport to be connected with Castaneda, in the present or in the past. Lastly, this work should not be construed as in any way condoning, supporting, encouraging, or recommending the use of any dangerous or illegal substance, or the performing of any dangerous or illegal activities. The teaching and research methods depicted in Castaneda's works should be viewed as the result of a unique convergence of time, place, and circumstance, and not as a template that any other person should attempt to follow. Video 5, Reawakening the Hunter 1. Despite their first rocky meeting, Castaneda did meet with Don Juan at the latter's house in Mexico six months or so later. During the six months that had passed, Castaneda considered the first meeting and decided that part of the reason things had gone wrong was that Don Juan saw him as a dilettante on the subject of medicinal plants. To rectify that potential shortcoming Castaneda spent the intervening time reading everything he could in the ethnographic literature that there was to read on the subject of the uses of various plants by the Indians of the southwest and northern Mexico, particularly the use of peyote. He thus entered their second meeting even more confident than he had been before, armed with even more knowledge about plants, feeling that Don Juan couldn't help but be impressed and would then enthusiastically embrace the idea of helping him with his doctoral work. As would become a typical pattern in their relationship, things never went as Castaneda projected they would, in fact, the more confident Castaneda was going into a situation, the more spectacularly it would blow up in his face. In their second meeting Castaneda bragged that he now knew a lot about plants, especially peyote. He very confidently made his pitch for Don Juan to become his main informant for his doctoral work. As before, the results were not at all what he expected. Don Juan more or less chided him for even mentioning peyote and told him that the subject was absolutely off-limits unless and until Don Juan himself brought it up. Castaneda tried to protest but Don Juan emphatically shut him down on the subject. However on other topics, Don Juan was much more affable and forthcoming than he'd been in the first encounter. His mood was almost buoyant, a state that Castaneda imagined that was rare for the old man. Don Juan even told a story. The well-known tale is based on the story of the Shibboleth, from the Book of Judges in the Old Testament. In the story, two tribes, the Ephraimites and the Gileadites, have a huge battle. The Gileadites win and set up a blockade across the Jordan to catch any fleeing Ephraimites. The Ephraimites could be distinguished from Gileadites by the way they pronounced certain words. In the Bible story, all passing through the blockade had to say the word shibboleth. This would expose who was an Ephraimite, since the Ephraimites had no sh in their language and would mispronounce the word. According to Judges 42,000 more Ephraimites were killed as a result of the blockade and word test. In Don Juan's rendition of the story, a young Ephraimite works on learning to pronounce the word, diligently, so that he can pass through the blockade. As a little tease at Castaneda, Don Juan even says the young man practiced the word for six months. Castaneda listened, indulging Don Juan in the recitation of a familiar tale. The appointed day approached, Don Juan said, and the young man strode confidently up to the checkpoint. He waited for the soldier to ask him to say shibboleth. But for some reason the question wasn't forthcoming. Castaneda suddenly was interested the story had taken on a direction he hadn't anticipated. The soldier, Don Juan said, had forgotten the identity word. Eventually he gave up trying to remember and asked the young man to say a different word. Castaneda was now completely thrown.
So what happened? He asked. Don Juan laughed. The young man couldn't pronounce the new word and was immediately put to death, of course, he said. Castaneda laughed as well, although rather uneasily. Was he the butt of Don Juan's joke? The serious young man who studies for six months only to have the silliest of things bring about his doom? And Castaneda was upset with how much Don Juan appeared to be enjoying his little joke, and that fact may have bothered him even more than the joke itself. But Castaneda did come to realize that the contorted version of the story was pretty funny, and that, much to the contrary of what people had said about Don Juan, that he was senile, sick, a drunk, etc. were clearly not true. Don Juan looked to be in his early seventies, but Castaneda had no trouble believing that the man in front of him was in significantly better physical shape than he himself was, some forty-plus years the man's junior. And Don Juan's mental sharpness was not in question. 2. I've talked about the difficulty of the teacher's task in bringing about the changes in the student that need to be brought about. The use of stories with a humorous surface content was one teaching device Don Juan used. Another technique he used to help Castaneda overcome natural perceptual barriers to learning was simpler, in a way, and yet resulted in opening Castaneda up to entirely new ways of thinking about his perceptions of the world, without Castaneda even realizing it, for a long time. This method Castaneda called context disassociation. While Castaneda was often willfully obscure about his biographical details, we can put him, for most of his life prior to meeting Don Juan, in one of two situations, a farm in Argentina, or in Los Angeles. These places don't matter that much in and of themselves, the important thing about them for purposes of Don Juan's teachings was that they were not the Sonoran Desert, where Don Juan lived, at least part of the time, and where Castaneda and Don Juan had most of their right-side interactions in the early years, especially. For a man like Castaneda, used to life on a farm, and then the life of an academic in one of the world's largest cities, the desert chaparral was about as unfamiliar a place as could be imagined. On several occasions Castaneda ponders the fact that if he were to somehow get separated from Don Juan, or worse, abandoned by him, he would never be able to find his way back to Don Juan's house alive. We've all felt that discomfort, to greater or lesser degrees. The first we're time in a strange city, or strange country. The first time we're somewhere significantly quieter, or significantly louder, than what we've known. A place with unfamiliar sights, sounds, smells, etc. Sometimes frightening, always disorienting. That sense of being out of place helped Don Juan deliver his lessons as the two men walked through the desert. Castaneda's sense of vague fear, or disorientation, of dependency upon Don Juan for physical survival even, created a heightened mental state in which Castaneda could learn and absorb. How exactly this helped in more than a general way will be expanded upon in later videos. 3. The effects, beneficial and otherwise, of context disassociation are typically short-lived. Eventually we adapt to the new environment and the alien becomes familiar, with all the comforts and drawbacks of that state. Don Juan needed a way to make the desert environment, and more broadly, the entire learning scenario, enjoyable and exciting for the long term. The magnitude of the changes that need to be made in the student mean that the instruction is something that can take a decade or more, the teacher has to keep the student coming back again and again, despite fear, despite facing the worst of what is inside of himself, and to make the student feel as though it's the student's own motivation that is creating the desire to return each time. A note about timing is in order. As I mentioned before regarding dates, it's impossible to be 100% certain about these things,
but Castaneda's casual comments and more structured explanations indicate that he would be with Don Juan for some length of time, days, a week, two weeks, perhaps. He would then have to return to Los Angeles to attend to his work there, and would return again when able to. The intervening time, one gets the impression, was typically a few months or so each instance. The exception was a complete break of two years, created by Castaneda's absolute terror of continuing. Aside from the two-year hiatus, the timing makes sense, an intense round of learning, listening, and self-examination, followed by a time away during which the student can see the applicability of the lesson just learned and put what has been learned in practice in his everyday life. One more consideration about timing is relevant. Since Castaneda did not recall until years later the times he had been pushed into the second attention by Don Juan and spent time in that state, it's likely that the time spent physically in Don Juan's presence by Castaneda is actually longer than he recounts in the early books. So Don Juan was faced with the task of how to get Castaneda to not only keep coming back, but wanting to come back. Castaneda, as mentioned, felt somewhat fearful and off-kilter being in the desert. But Castaneda had an aesthetic appreciation of the beauty of the desert, and quickly found himself in awe of Don Juan's absolute knowledge of the terrain and of the flora and fauna of the area. I mentioned above the Castaneda spent much of his youth and adolescence on a farm. One of his jobs on the farm was protecting the livestock from attacks by foxes, coyotes, birds of prey, etc. Over time he became very proficient with a rifle, rather proud of his ability to contribute to the well-being of the family by protecting the farm animals from would-be predators. And Castaneda's hunting would be the way that Don Juan would draw Castaneda deeper into his world and his knowledge. For Don Juan, a hunter is a figure of respect, and in many ways the forerunner of a sorcerer. The hunter is in sync with his environment, he survives without needing human interaction, he uses only what is needed. The hunter is serious in purpose and sober in manner and thought, he recognizes that hunter and prey are, in a much larger sense, really one and the same. The hunter moves through the places he goes almost like a slight breeze, disrupting as little as possible in the course of his activities. Don Juan thus saw a way to maintain and increase Castaneda's interest in their activities, while at the same time teaching and enforcing positive personality traits in Castaneda. As they hiked through the desert surrounding Don Juan's house, Don Juan discussed two broad topics, Castaneda's various character and personality flaws and how to correct them, and the habits of game animals of the area and how to trap them. The former were delivered with absolute clarity and brutal honesty, the latter were imparted in such an engaging and engrossing way that the negative seemed almost easy to accept. Over the course of their association, Don Juan showed Castaneda how to trap scores of different animals and birds found in the area. These were only killed, cooked, and eaten on those occasions where an actual meal was needed, most of the time Don Juan was simply demonstrating the technique. This was sufficient to rekindle Castaneda's hunting spirit and at the same time reinforce the idea that one did not have to completely use up everything, and in his daily life, everyone, that he came into contact with. The stage was set for real learning to begin.